welcome 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 to the thanksgiving challenge the power of thanksgiving challenge and uh, today is day five we have had wonderful time together day one day two day three day four and today day five someone said it was powerful and mind-blowing hallelujah it is God's doing however we have decided because God still has something special for us and we don't want to end without releasing the totality of what God has for us so we are going to have a bonus day hallelujah today We'll start first with a recap of day four. On day four, our Thanksgiving scripture was from Jeremiah chapter 30, 19 to 20. And uh, I'll read just the King James Version. Uh, the King James Version says, And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Their children shall also be as aforetime, and, they, and their congregation shall be established before me. And I will punish those that oppress them. Hallelujah. Perhaps this is a special word for you as an individual, as a leader as a head of a family, as a youth leader, as a pastor. God is saying, out of them, that is you and your people, you and those under your leadership, Out of you shall proceed the voice of them that make merry. The NIV says, From them will come songs of thanksgiving and sound of rejoicing. Hallelujah. Then God goes on to say that because of the thanksgiving and the songs raised, I will multiply them. He's going to multiply people under your leadership. He says, they shall not be few. He is going to multiply you as, as a head of a family. He is going to multiply the congregation under your leadership as a pastor. He shall not be few. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving is very critical. We are seeing that it can produce blessings. It can produce miracles. Thanksgiving, from this scripture, produces the miracle, the miracles of abundance, the miracles of growth, the miracles of of multiplication the miracles of increase the miracles of new heights 
new dimensions the miracles of promotion hallelujah thanking God for what he has done moves God to do more hallelujah it moves him to do more and then yesterday we gave our usual reminders the reminder of cultivating the thanksgiving habit through discipline we said it's just discipline that will help you to cultivate it before it can be part and parcel of you if you have determined because every habit is cultivated through discipline if you have determined to do that we gave two ways by which you can cultivate this the first is to develop intentional and deliberate as well as conscious habit of thanksgiving and there are two things you can do there may be others but we recommend two things we don't want to lump many things to you the first start your prayers with thanksgiving whenever you want to pray start with thanksgiving I want you to say after me start with thanksgiving start with thanksgiving when you start your prayers with thanksgiving you are intentionally you are deliberately and consciously building that habit of thanksgiving and gradually you will get used to it you, you, you'll be able to even start doing it without thinking the next is through the thanksgiving book we advised that each person should have a thanksgiving book as I have I have my own thanksgiving book it's very important it should be a hardcover book so that it cannot easily get spoiled. And we have been teaching you how to design the page of, it, of your book. Each page of the Thanksgiving book. The first column is the column of serial numbers. The second column, the dates. And the third column, which is the biggest, is the thanksgiving topics. The, the column for the thanksgiving topics. Can you see mine? For those online, you will be shown uh, the computer version, which can be clearer since you are not close to me here in person. If you have not yet started keeping the Thanksgiving book, start today. Get a book. Build the habit. Begin to do it. It will only take five minutes to write down uh, 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 something to thank God about. So, you make your entries each day, five minutes, ten minutes, and then you raise your voice and thank God about it. When you do it consciously in the morning, when you go out during the day, in the course of the day, it, it, be, it, 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 it will very soon become natural for you. When God does anything or somebody does something for you, you will remember to thank God spontaneously. That brings us to the third uh, way of developing the Thanksgiving habit which is developing unconscious and spontaneous habits of thanksgiving. We want the habit of thanksgiving to finally become an unconscious and spontaneous thing. Something you just do without thinking. 
because it, it has become part of you. Your heart is bubbling towards God to rejoice and to thank Him, to appreciate Him, to acknowledge Him, to celebrate Him. Hallelujah. So, start your prayers with thanksgiving. Keep a thanksgiving book. In day four yesterday, our teaching was thanksgiving, a key to miracles, part one. And we taught that thanksgiving positions you for blessings and miracles. And we took our teaching mainly from Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to, to uh, 19. The story of the ten lepers whom Jesus healed. Nine went away to enjoy their healing and did not come back to thank God. And we are like that. We enjoy our healing. We enjoy our blessings. And we don't remember to come back to thank God. However, only one came back and he modeled thanksgiving before us. He modeled thanksgiving with fervency. He modeled thanksgiving with the totality of his voice. He modeled thanksgiving with the totality of his body and energy. He gave himself totally. He fell before Jesus. The Lord Jesus lamented, were there not ten who were healed and only this one came back? And because of that, the Lord Jesus blessed him with further miracles. Hallelujah. He received further miracles because he came back to thank the Lord. The Lord Jesus pronounced unto him, your faith has made you whole. The Bible said they were healed of leprosy. But now, the Lord Jesus said they were healed using the word, the Greek word, sozo, which does not only pertain to the healing of the body alone, but also the healing of the soul. When a person is a sinner. He has spiritual leprosy. So when a person is cleansed spiritually, he is made whole. Only one out of the ten received this spiritual cleansing, the miracle. And the miracle of salvation is greater than any other miracle. Even the, the miracle of raising a dead man physically. Hallelujah. And as we said, the others went away with the signs of leprosy disappearing. But their uh, fingers and toes and body are still marked by where the leprosy had eaten. This man was completely whole. He, Thanksgiving made him receive perfect wholeness. So that by the time he fell down before Jesus to thank him and got up, there was no sign of him ever having traces of fingers cut and, and totally uh, 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 destroyed by, by leprosy. Hallelujah. He's the only one that ended up with that miracle. He received the miracle of perfection of his healing. He received the miracle of salvation, rescued from destruction, and was blessed with spiritual blessings. Hallelujah. We give praise to God. And uh, um, our Thanksgiving Sorry, our Thanksgiving challenge homework for yesterday. Uh, because of time, 
I will not go into it, but uh, it can be uh, flashed on the screen so that our viewers can see and be reminded. If you want to, you who are here physically, you can, you can go back to, the, to online or ask uh, Brother Daniel so that you can work on it if you have not done your assignment. It's important to do the homework because your transformation is in your implementation. If you implement nothing, no transformation comes to you. Amen. For today, Thanksgiving, a key to miracles, part two. We start first with the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 6. Two days ago, we looked at that scripture. But we were confronting a different burden. The burden of praying in difficult times. In bad situations. Because it's always very difficult to pray in such situations. People can pray when things are going well. When they have received blessings. People, people can pray when they are happy. But not when sad things, bad things happen to them. When they are facing challenges. We read John chapter 6 and verse 7 to 13 very quickly. The background was that there were thousands of people Jesus ministered to and who need to be fed. So Jesus was asking his disciples, his disciples to give them something to eat. Verse 7. Philip answered him, Eight months wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Uh, and, and, and converted to the to 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 today's money, uh, that's a huge amount to feed thousands of people. Verse 8. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? You see, the first reaction of people is to look at that which is a problem rather than look at God who can solve the problems. So we look at the problem. We become more conscious of the problems and we complain. We become more conscious of what the devil is doing around us and we complain. They are so conscious of the inadequacy of the food that they complain. Verse 10. Jesus said, have the people sit down. There is plenty of grass in that place and the men sat down. About 5,000. This is not talking about the women, not talking about the children, just men alone. 5,000. Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. Can you imagine? As much as they wanted. So that each person ate and was full. <laughs> he did the same with the fish. When they had all eaten, had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. Five barley loaves that could hardly fill one person. Uh, many people may think that 
the Jewish bread is like our own bread here that are so fat and thick. Their bread is like pancake. One bread is flat, smallish thing. Can you eat two pancakes, three pancakes, and really, really be full? Can you? I'm asking. So five barley loaves, it may, it, it, it may hardly be enough for a full-grown adult. But everyone ate and were filled. That's a miracle. And then there were 12 baskets full. Hallelujah. What provoked this miracle? The Bible says in verse 11, Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks. He gave thanks. Hallelujah. Now let's look at verse 23. Verse 23 of this same chapter, Jesus was rebuking them for following him because they want more bread to eat. So, uh, in verse 23, it says, Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Why is the phrase, after the Lord had given thanks, why is it emphasized here? It is just to show you that the miracle came about because Jesus did not pray any long prayer. He didn't, they have seen Jesus pray and they have asked him to teach them how to pray. They have, asked, they have seen him command demons and demons go. They have seen him. But this time around, he only thanked God. Thanksgiving. And that's why it's written here. For, so that it will sink into our hearts that it is thanksgiving that provoked that miracle. Hallelujah. The emphasis is on giving thanks that produces miracles. So it's important to thank God for what you have. Not for what you don't have. I mean, not to grumble about what you don't have. Not to complain about what you don't have. Thank God for what you have, even if it is not enough. It was not enough to feed all these people, but Jesus thanked God. God is a God of more than enough. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, tells us that he is the God who does exceedingly abundantly more than what we can ever think or ask for. Hallelujah. It may be that you have money, but it's not enough to pay the school fees of your children and you don't know where to turn to. It may be you have food, but it's not enough to feed the family. It may be as a student, you don't have enough to pay your fees. Jesus thanked God. Hallelujah. Our God is the God who is more than enough. He will transform what is not enough to become more than enough. Hallelujah. Also, it's important to thank God in advance for what he is yet to do. Always also thank God in advance for what he is yet to do. Because that's an act of faith that you believe he will do it. And that act of faith in thanking him in advance for what he's yet to do, that act of faith provokes miracles. Hallelujah. Thanking him ahead for things 
you have also asked for is very important. If you have asked for something, if you have prayed for something, thank God for it. Immediately you finish praying, thank God for it. Believe in God that he has heard your prayer and he will do it. Amen. In fact, Jesus said so. Also, thank him ahead for the things he has promised. Do you know the things he has promised in, his script, in the scriptures which pertain to you? Are there things in specific prophecies he has promised concerning you? You have not yet seen them physically. Thank God ahead. Say with me, thank God ahead. We go to our next example. Our next example is from John chapter 11. We are not going to read it. But it has to do with the story of Lazarus. He was dead and for four days has been buried. His body ought to decompose by that time and be smelling. But when Jesus got there, Jesus was so moved, he wept. It was a sorrowful situation. But in verse 41, the Bible says, Jesus thanked God. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't pray any long prayer for Lazarus to be resurrected back to life. No long prayer. He simply thanked God. And that thanksgiving brought about the miracle of resurrecting Lazarus back to life. Hallelujah. We rush on to our third example of thanksgiving as a key to miracles. And this is from the book of Jonah. Jonah. The book of Jonah. Very interesting story. You know the story of Jonah. God sent him on a missionary work. He ran away from God because he did not want to go where God sent him. He did not want to do the work God sent him. And he had to be thrown into the sea. A big fish swallowed him. God was so merciful. He didn't want him to perish. He provided a, 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 a fish that swallowed him. Jonah knew that he was a sinner. From verse 1 of chapter 2, because we are, we are concentrating on, we are looking at chapter 2. From verse 1 to 8, Jonah prayed. He prayed. Let us look at it a little. He said, from inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord. He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord. He was praying in distress. And he prayed all kinds of prayer. But the miracle of his deliverance did not happen. He prayed and prayed. God did not move. But in verse 9, his prayer changed. Jonah changed his way of praying. He said, in verse 9 and 10, but I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I vowed I will make good.
good. Salvation comes from the Lord. And verse 10, And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry ground. What was it that provoked the miracle? Thanksgiving. The song of thanksgiving. He was in a terrible situation. A terrible predicament. A, a situation where a person may not remember to even thank God. He's, he prayed all kinds of prayer and God did not move. God says in his word, enter his gates with thanksgiving. He did not come with thanksgiving. He came with his cry of distress. And there was no move from God to free him. But even in his pains, in his troubles, he decided that he's going to sing a song as a sacrifice of thanksgiving to God. Then God responded. He said, this, thing, this song that I committed, I will sing as a sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will do it. And when he did it, God commanded the fish to, to vomit. <laughs> to vomit him on dry ground. <laughs> Clap for God. <laughs> Thanksgiving produced and provoked the miracle of Jonah's deliverance. Hallelujah. It moved God to mercy. Thanksgiving moved God to mercy and produced the miracle. Our last example comes from 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And many of us are familiar with that story. We we'll read from verse 20 to 24. Three nations mobilized their armies to come and fight against Judah because they want to crush Judah. The Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Munites. And the king was terrified. The people were terrified. They knew they, had, they were no match. Hallelujah. However, after praying, what came to what, the spiritual direction that came was that as they go to war, they should be chanting and saying and singing words and, or, and songs of thanksgiving. Let's read it. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood. I'm, I'm reading from 2 Chronicles 20, 20, chapter 20, verse 20 to 24. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah, and the people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Can you imagine such kind of warfare? People are going for battle. The army is supposed to be going ahead. But he says, no, the army should be behind the praise singers. There should be people who sing and chant and musicians to just be praising God. Let them go ahead. Do you make noise when you are going to meet your enemy, to fight your enemy? It is so illogical. 
it looks like total foolishness. It looks like these people have decided to commit suicide because their enemies know where they are and they will attack them and take them. Verse 22. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set, set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. The men of Ammon and Moab rose up against the men of Mount, from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. When the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. Can you imagine? God fought for them. God sent angels among them to start killing them. And they didn't see the angel and they were angry. Ah, we came to fight this people and you are killing us. And they started killing one another. And they finished one another. No one escaped. The people of Judah did not have to fight. Hallelujah. That's a great miracle. Praise be. And thanksgiving became a weapon for war. Became a weapon and a miracle. A key for miracle. Hallelujah. These examples illustrate what we are saying concerning thanksgiving as a key to miracles. But we want you to know that God does not want you to approach him through formulas. A lot of people they want to learn how to pray four keys how to pray so that God will answer your prayer. Seven keys for effective prayer and things like that. So they want to follow dry patterns without a heart, without relationship. And God does not accept such things. God is looking for relationship. Don't relate with God through formulas and say, oh, now praise is a formula for miracles, for, for a formula for blessings. No, no, no. We are only telling you about the blessings that can come when you cultivate a life of praising God. These people were people who praise God. Hallelujah. Never relate with God through a formula. Say with me. Never relate with God through a formula. When you, re when you relate with God through a formula, the heart is not there. Jesus rebuked the, 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 the Jews and quoted Jeremiah saying that these people... They, they draw that God, God rebukes them that they draw near to him with their lips and not with their hearts God wants a heart relationship and when we started this uh, power of thanksgiving challenge we said thanksgiving is God's love language hello do you still remember? Thanksgiving is God's love language. He wants relationship with us. He wants love us. Thanksgiving is God's love language. Relate with him in love. Relate with him through his love language. But he will always make sure that you have great benefits as a result of your relationship with him. Praise the Lord. 
We are going to end today by announcing our challenge homework. Today, day five, our homework is commit yourself to thank God for what you have, even if not enough. Commit yourself to always thank God for what you have, even if not enough. Look at the things you have for now. Even if they are not enough, thank God for what, they have, what you have. The second, commit yourself to thank God in advance for what he is yet to do. So thank God for, in advance for what he is yet to do. Amen? And thirdly, thank God for what you are learning in this power of thanksgiving challenge. Amen? Thank God for what you are learning in this power of thanksgiving challenge. Also, we want you to, memo, uh, uh, to meditate on John chapter 6, verse 23 that we, 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 we looked at, which is the scripture for today. The Thanksgiving scripture. That scripture referred to that place where the people ate bread and noted that that was where Jesus gave thanks that resulted in the multiplication, the miracle of multiplication. Hallelujah. That's all we have for you today. Tomorrow, we said, is going to be a bonus day. So, we look forward to see you as the last day comes your way tomorrow. Special bonus for you. God bless you and bye for now. I come before you today There's just one thing that I